July 18, Judah's Worthless Treaty with Egypt What sorrow awaits my rebellious children, says the Lord. You make plans that are contrary to mine. You make alliances not directed by my spirit, thus piling up your sins. For without consulting me, you have gone down to Egypt for help. You have put your trust in Pharaoh's protection. You have tried to hide in his shade. But by trusting Pharaoh, you will be humiliated. And by depending on him, you will be disgraced. For though his power extends to Zoan and his officials have arrived in Hanes, all who trust in him will be ashamed. He will not help you. Instead, he will disgrace you. This message came to me concerning the animals in the Negev. The caravan moved slowly across the terrible desert to Egypt. Donkeys weighed down with riches and camels loaded with treasure, all to pay for Egypt's protection. They travel through the wilderness, a place of lionesses and lions, a place where vipers and poisonous snakes live. All this and Egypt will give you nothing in return. Egypt's promises are worthless. Therefore, I call her Rahab the harmless dragon. A warning for rebellious Judah. Now go and write down these words. Write them in a book. They will stand until the end of time as a witness that these people are stubborn rebels who refuse to pay attention to the Lord's instructions. They tell the seers, stop seeing visions. They tell the prophets, don't tell us what is right. Tell us nice things. Tell us lies. Forget all this gloom. Get off your narrow path. Stop telling us about your Holy One of Israel. This is the reply of the Holy One of Israel. Because you despise what I tell you and trust instead in oppression and lies, calamity will come upon you suddenly like a bulging wall that bursts and falls. In an instant it will collapse and come crashing down. You will be smashed like a piece of pottery, shattered so completely that there won't be a piece big enough to carry coals from a fireplace or a little water from the well. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says, Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength, but you would have none of it. You said, No, we will get our help from Egypt. They will give us swift horses for riding into battle, but the only swiftness you are going to see is the swiftness of your enemies chasing you. One of them will chase a thousand of you. Five of them will make all of you flee. You will be left like a lonely flagpole on a hill or a tattered banner on a distant mountaintop. Blessings for the Lord's people. So the Lord must wait for you to come to him so he can show you his love and compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will be gracious if you ask for help. He will surely respond to the sound of your cries. Though the Lord gave you adversity for food and suffering for drink, he will still be with you to teach you. You will see your teacher with your own eyes. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, This is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Then you will destroy all your silver idols and your precious gold images. You will throw them out like filthy rags, saying to them, Good riddance. Then the Lord will bless you with rain at planting time. There will be wonderful harvests and plenty of pasture land for your livestock. The oxen and donkeys that till the ground will eat good grain, its chaff blown away by the wind. In that day when your enemies are slaughtered and the towers fall, there will be streams of water flowing down every mountain and hill. The moon will be as bright as the sun, and the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days in one. So it will be when the Lord begins to heal his people and cure the wounds he gave them. Look, the Lord is coming from far away, burning with anger, surrounded by thick, rising smoke. His lips are filled with fury. His words consume like fire. His hot breath 
pours out like a flood up to the neck of his enemies. He will sift out the proud nations for destruction. He will bridle them and lead them away to ruin. But the people of God will sing a song of joy like the songs at the holy festivals. You will be filled with joy as when a flutist leads a group of pilgrims to Jerusalem, the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will make his majestic voice heard. He will display the strength of his might mighty arm. It will descend with devouring flames, with cloudbursts, thunderstorms, and huge hailstones. At the Lord's command, the Assyrians will be shattered. He will strike them down with his royal scepter. And as the Lord strikes them with his rod of punishment, his people will celebrate with tambourines and harps. Lifting his mighty arm, he will fight the Assyrians. Topheth, the place of burning, has long been ready for the Assyrian king. The pyre is piled high with wood. The breath of the Lord, like fire from a volcano, will set it ablaze. The Futility of Relying on Egypt What sorrow awaits those who look to Egypt for help, trusting their horses, chariots, and charioteers, and depending on the strength of human armies instead of looking to the Lord, the Holy One of Israel? In his wisdom, the Lord will send great disaster. He will not change his mind. He will rise against the wicked and against their helpers. For these Egyptians are mere humans, not God. Their horses are puny flesh, not mighty spirits. When the Lord raises his fist against them, those who help will stumble, and those being helped will fall. They will all fall down and die together. But this is what the Lord has told me. When a strong young lion stands growling over a sheep, it is killed. It is not frightened by the shouts and noise of a whole crowd of shepherds. In the same way, the Lord of Heaven's armies will come down and fight on Mount Zion. The Lord of Heaven's armies will hover over Jerusalem and protect it like a bird protecting its nest. He will defend and save the city. He will pass over it and rescue it. Though you are such wicked rebels, my people, come and return to the Lord. I know the glorious day will come when each of you will throw away the gold idols and silver images your sinful hands have made. The Assyrians will be destroyed, but not by the swords of men. The sword of God will strike them, and they will panic and flee. The strong young Assyrians will be taken away as captives. Even the strongest will quake with terror, and princes will flee when they see your battle flags, says the Lord, whose fire burns in Zion, whose flame blazes from Jerusalem. Israel's Ultimate Deliverance Look! A righteous king is coming, and honest princes will rule under him. Each one will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a parched land. Then everyone who has eyes will be able to see the truth, and everyone who has ears will be able to hear it. Even the hotheads will be full of sense and understanding. Those who stammer will speak out plainly. In that day, ungodly fools will not be heroes. Scoundrels will not be respected. For fools speak foolishness and make evil plans. They practice ungodliness and spread false teachings about the Lord. They deprive the hungry of food and give no water to the thirsty. The smooth tricks of scoundrels are evil. They plot crooked schemes. They lie to convict the poor, even when the cause of the poor is just. But generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. Listen, you women who lie around in ease. Listen to me, you who are so smug. In a short time, just a little more than a year, you careless ones will suddenly begin to care, for your fruit crops will fail and the harvest will never take place. Tremble, you women of ease. Throw off your complacency. Strip off your pretty clothes and put on burlap to show your grief. Beat your breasts in sorrow for your bountiful farms and your fruitful grapevines, for your land will be overgrown with thorns and briars. Your joyful homes and happy towns will be gone. The palace and the city will be deserted, and busy towns will be empty. Wild donkeys will frolic, and flocks will graze in the empty forts and watchtowers, until at last the Spirit is poured out on us from heaven. Then the wilderness will become a fertile field, and the fertile field will yield bountiful crops." 
justice will rule in the wilderness and righteousness in the fertile field. And this righteousness will bring peace. Yes, it will bring quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in safety, quietly at home. They will be at rest. Even if the forest should be destroyed and the city torn down, the Lord will greatly bless his people wherever they plant seed, Bountiful crops will spring up. Their cattle and donkeys will graze freely. A Message About Assyria What sorrow awaits you, Assyrians, who have destroyed others, but have never been destroyed yourselves? You betray others, but you have never been betrayed. When you are done destroying, you will be destroyed. When you are done betraying, you will be betrayed. But, Lord, be merciful to us, for we have waited for you. Be our strong arm each day and our salvation in times of trouble. The enemy runs at the sound of your voice. When you stand up, the nations flee. Just as caterpillars and locusts strip the fields and vines, so the fallen army of Assyria will be stripped. Though the Lord is very great and lives in heaven, he will make Jerusalem his home of justice and righteousness. In that day, he will be your sure foundation, providing a rich store of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord will be your treasure. But now your brave warriors weep in public. Your ambassadors of peace cry in bitter disappointment. Your roads are deserted. No one travels them anymore. The Assyrians have broken their peace treaty and care nothing for the promises they made before witnesses. They have no respect for anyone. The land of Israel wilts in mourning. Lebanon withers with shame. The plain of Sharon is now a wilderness. Bashan and Carmel have been plundered. But the Lord says, Now I will stand up. Now I will show my power and might. You Assyrians produce nothing but dry grass and stubble. Your own breath will turn to fire and consume you. Your people will be burned up completely, like thorn bushes cut down and tossed in a fire. Listen to what I have done, you nations far away, and you that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Jerusalem shake with fear. Terror seizes the godless. Who can live with this devouring fire, they cry? Who can survive this all-consuming fire? Those who are honest and fair, who refuse to profit by fraud, who stay far away from bribes, who refuse to listen to those who plot murder, who shut their eyes to all enticement to do wrong, these are the ones who will dwell on high. The rocks of the mountains will be their fortress. Food will be supplied to them, and they will have water in abundance. Your eyes will see the king in all his splendor, and you will see a land that stretches into the distance. You will think back to this time of terror, asking, Where are the Assyrian officers who counted our towers? Where are the bookkeepers who recorded the plunder taken from our fallen city? You will no longer see these fierce, violent people with their strange, unknown language. Instead, you will see Zion as a place of holy festivals. You will see Jerusalem, a city quiet and secure. It will be like a tent whose ropes are taut and whose stakes are firmly fixed. The Lord will be our mighty one. He will be like a wide river of protection that no enemy can cross, that no enemy ship can sail upon. For the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. He will care for us and save us. The enemy's sails hang loose on broken masts with useless tackle. Their treasure will be divided by the people of God. Even the lame will take their share. The people of Israel will no longer say, We are sick and helpless, for the Lord will forgive their sins.